Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. Okay, so I know you're supposed to be meeting Adeline Sede Kamga, but here am I. I'll be your co-host for the day. So while we're waiting for others to join us, we'll be playing some of our videos. Sans les plaisanteries, dans le travail même, il faut avoir des barrières en fait, sécuriser son environnement, c'est tout ça, physique et émotionnel. Tous ces diplômes, ils se promènent de partout et que vous devez faire la différence parmi toutes ces personnes, il faut que vous ayez une valeur ajoutée. C'est cela qu'il s'agit. You must be a logistic officer. Then you're missing your dream. You need to look at your CV. After this meeting, come to me. Bring your CV, bring your mission statement to me. And let's talk about the brand new.
everybody and welcome to today's topic it's a different conversation from what we've been having because this is this is an area where we feel obliged this is an area we feel obliged because so many things are going unnoticed and sometimes people don't understand sometimes people understand and there is nothing that they can do about it we'll be discussing bullying and harassment today especially bullying and, bullying and harassment at work it's been a long way coming. The conversation has started on different forums, on different platforms for such a long time. And we're just sharing, adding our voices to what others have been saying. There are so many things, you know, so many definitions, so many podcasts, so many documentation, so many research on bullying and harassment out there. But we keep asking ourselves, why does it never stop? Why does it always happen? Why is bullying and harassment such a big thing? Why is it so? Why is it so real? Today we'll be, we'll be trying to we'll, you know we we'll try to address some of the issues you know we we'll try to give a definition. We're going to give some basic definition of what this is all about bullying and harassment. We're going to give definition. Uh, we're going to give you how you can identify if you're being bullied or if you're being harassed. We're also going to be bringing on the show. I know you're all expecting me to be, this is what's supposed to be a solo, you know, a solo show, but we're not going to make it solo because at the end of the day, I thought it is good for me to bring in some professionals, some people who already work in a sector or in, you know, in the sectors whereby they deal with these things directly. So today on the show, we'll be having an expert, an HR expert who's going to talk about some policies and, you know, some of the issues around bullying and harassment and why some companies do not address it she will also be giving you you know what you can do and also a little bit of highlight on your rights you know and we'll also be talking to you know um a lady who owns her own company and she will be talking about how she deals with bullying and harassment at work because she is the boss so before i start i would like to introduce our because or our my guest because this is about me today me in the sense that it's a one-man show but i wouldn't do this alone since i want to include other people who have got deeper insight in different sectors different countries so that they can come and share some insight with you so on the show today you're going to be having rosalind fonkwa mundongi who is the founder of reline care it's a uk-based company and it's a company that provides social care and services to people in need now, if you know about this industry, you will understand that there is a lot that happens in a sec in the care section. This is because most often people are either frustrated, people are unhappy, people are just outlying bullies, you know, because they want to get their way around. So we thought she's the right person to come on today and try to talk about how she deals with this personally as an employer and how she is using the law to help her manage this. And our next guest on the show today is princess mimi Quepo. you know she is a nature professional i mean i've connected with mimi for like 10 years now and we've always had to exchange you know issues around hr issues around training and development and leadership skills and she is also a doctorate student at the moment a philanthropist yes and Apart from that, Mimi has a very fun side of her. And I think that is one of the things that made me to connect with Mimi in an all-round way. We did not just connect as professionals, but we also connected because she is fun-loving, she is easygoing, she is that kind of a person that brings sun sunshine where she where she works. So minus that, or above all, Mimi is very passionate when it comes to girls' empowerment and bullying and harassment is an area which she is so passionate about and she will be telling us how she deals with this as an hr professional and how she plans to deal with this as mimi the philanthropist so let's start okay before i bring the guests online i want to tell you so i want to read out some basic definition of bullying and harassment that way we all can be on the same wavelength Bullying and har harassment most often are interlay, meaning sometimes people don't know the difference between bullying and harassment, and we tend to, we tend to use these two the same way. 
truth be told, from all the research that I've done in the past, this is so connected. They can hardly be one without the others, you know, but sometimes there is one without the other, but most often they come together. So what's the difference? Bullying and harassment are terms that are used interchangeably, just as I said, by organizations, because sometimes it's so hard to divide these two things. And we always try to put them together because one can justify the other, just like I said. Harassment on one side tends to refer to a behavior, the way you behave. It's more or less physical, tangible. You can actually see it and it is not as subtle as bullying. But then when you're being harassed, you can easily tell when you're being harassed because either your space is being invaded, you're physically touched, you are physically, you know, verbally abused. And it is so real. You can, you can, you can spot on that this is harassment because it is so clear for you to say. It is usually very offensive. When you're being harassed, it is offensive, meaning you, you feel offended. Emotionally, you're being touched. And it is also intrusive, just like I said, meaning your space, you know, your space, somebody intruding on, in, in, on your space. You know, this person is sometimes you say, this is my space. You know, you can talk to me, but please make sure you stay in a distance. Don't, close, don't, co don't come closer to me because this is my space. Sometimes it is sexual. Sometimes it is racial. Sometimes it's, it is physical. Most often it has all these elements, you know, the racial, the sexual, the physical. But ACAS, which is, you know, the, the arbitrary body in the UK, ACAS would define harassment as unwanted conduct that violates people's dignity or creates an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating, or offensive environment. That is harassment. Whereas they'll define bullying as no single definition, but offensive, intimidating, malicious, or insulting behavior and abuse or misuse of power through means intended to undermine, humiliate, denigrate, or injure the recipient. So if you are the person on the receiving end, this is how it makes you feel. We've got a few questions that we need to answer with regards to bullying and harassment. And I'm just going to pop, you know, a few, I'm just going to pop a few questions. So you see some of the issues that we'll be addressing today. We'll be addressing where does it stem from? Where does it stem from? Sometimes we say it uh, when we're working, we say bullying and harassment, I'm being bullied. Why do you think someone would choose to bully you? Where does it really stem from? Let me tell you a small story. You know, as parents or as, I don't want to say as parents, but as people who live in this world, when we start our primary education to our secondary education, to our university education, there is always this one person or this group of person whereby we point finger and say, ha, huh, Jack is a bully. Peter is a bully. Adeline is a bully. Right from childhood, we do understand when we're being bullied or when we do, we can identify when someone is a bully. But at that point, we can hardly use the word harassment. We will normally say, I'm being bullied at school. Sometimes the institution do not deal with this immediately. The family of the, of the bullied person does not deal with this. Or the person, the parents of the person who's a bully just keep a blind eyes. Personally, I would say bully can stem from childhood. That is where it all started. Because as a young person, once you identify that you have powers, you could be physically strong, you know, huge, big. And there is this other person who is not physically much, you know, a little bit not as big as you are or it's not as popular as you are, you're going to use your influence because you have more friends. You have more people who are your friends at school. You are the, the hyper man or the hyper woman at school and everybody want to be in your network. You will use your power to bully. And at that point, the person who is being bullied will find it so difficult to report the fact that she, he is being bullied. I would say bullying stems from childhood. 
These are some of the things that as a child, if your parents you know, realize that you have a bullying attitude, they should try to stop that, to curb that. Because if not, you are going to grow from primary education, secondary education, university, and then you're going to take it right at work. So I would say bullying really start at work. Some schools you can notice or you can identify harassment. Yes, you can. But sometimes we don't call it harassment because it normally ends with the words, you know, with all the tension, with all the threats and all the things that you have. So I would say bullying stems from first childhood, you know, that's where it stems from. And then I'll also say it also stems from wanting what another person has, you know. Say, for example, at work. Sometimes you just see how competent, competent someone is. And you want to put that person down. You want to you want to do things that will diminish the person and make the person really lose confidence. Because sometimes when you don't have confidence, you can't perform. And when you can't perform, you're no longer the star at work, isn't it? So bullying is all these things put together. But then again, it is more. We want to talk about the difference between bullying and harassment. And I've just explained that sometimes we can't we can't see them. We can't identify that we're being bullied, you know, or we're being harassed. But if I can read, you know, from my research, I will tell you what I found out. Harassment has a strong physical contact, you know, component. For example, contact, touch, intrusion of personal space, damage to possession, sabotage or target of, tab, of target work. So when you're sabotaging, just like what I said. Whereas on the other hand, bullying is more psychological, isn't it? It's psychological because you don't invade that space, not all the time. When it's at work, you don't invade that space. Except in very rare cases, and research shows that mostly men will go to the extreme of bullying and harassing you, you know. Normally, they'll do it psychologically, but when they come physical, that is an extreme, which you don't usually find in, in the workplace, okay? And then the perpetrator tend to focus on individual difference. So, for example, you look at the difference, for example, your gender, your sex, and you will pick on that to capitalize on it and make me feel weak, make me feel small. It can occur several times. Harassment can occur several times, and trust me, you will not even have the ability to, 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 to react immediately because the first time you will say, I think I'm going to, to wait, you know, I'm going to see if it's going to happen again. And then the second time it will happen again. The third time it will happen again. Whereas bullying, you may not be able to identify this for such a long time. So you might be bullied over and over and over again. And you will not even tell that you're being bullied because it is taking place in a very subtle way, which you do not understand. So harassment is very offensive. For example, vocabulary used, some strong word that is being used, you know, on you. That's harassment. Although it has an aspect of psychological, because no physical contact has been done, but when the word goes straight to the point, then you know you're being harassed, right? Harassment can take place in public because sometimes people just, um, sometimes people just decide to harass you because they can't hold their emotion anymore. They can't bottle up their emotion and they tell themselves, you know what, I'm just going to do this because they want to humiliate you in front of everybody. Whereas bullying usually takes place in private because people want to bully you, but they don't want any proof. So they don't want any proof, you know, they just want to bully you so that you don't have any records. Usually it will take place in private without any witness so that if you tell someone that I've been bullied, it's going to be difficult for that person to say, okay, where is the proof? I can't see any physical, you know, struggle. I can't see any marks. I can't see anything. But that is exactly how it is. Now, how do you identify if you're being bullied or harassed? Identify. I will say two things. The shoes that you wear. The shoes that you wear, you alone can tell where they pinch, isn't it? You can tell where those shoes pinch you because you are the person feeling it. Personally, I don't think you can tell someone, I feel that person is being harassed or I feel that person is being bullied, except you're very close to this person and you've realized or recognized some changes in the way this person behaves. You've recognized some changes in the way 
um, the person speak, you recognize the way this person reacts when someone comes closer to them, and then you can say, I think this person is being bullied. I think this person is being harassed. A few years ago, this was like five years ago, we were being, or I was one of eight women who were being approached by the United Nations to talk about peace and security in Africa. This is part of the agenda, Trends of Venkat, or Trends of Venkat, which is um, peace and security. So we are trying to see how we can use our platform as women in the media to promote peace and security and to raise awareness on how people can, people can, you know, um, promote peace and how people can be secure. So when I looked at the theme and I looked at the mandate, I told myself, yes, this is a very good thing, but although we were being asked to look at the community, to look at um, the, the conflict zone and to collect information that shows that in this area where there is conflict, there are a lot of women who are not at peace, who are not secured. And we were also asked to look for recommendation. How can we support these women to make sure they understand the support that they have in place, which will help them to have a much more peaceful life, a much more secured life. What I decided to do, my team and I, is we decided to create different seminars because we have identified that in Africa in particular, there are lots and lots and lots of bullying and harassment at work. In the Western world, this is a little bit different because we have policies, we have procedures, but in Africa, there are lots and lots of bullying, there are lots and lots of harassment, and in most cases, people don't talk about it. So we decided to use our platforms, we decided to, to raise our voices. So we've been to Cote d'Ivoire, we've been to Senegal, we've been to Cameroon, we've been to Gabon, and we've been holding seminars online. One of the key topics of what we've discussed was bullying and harassment at work, and most especially sexual harassment at work. We cannot stress it enough, the kind of issues that women go through because of their gender. I think women are the most bullied, although some men are bullied and harassed as well. But I must confess that based on the research that we've collected in the, in the last five years, women are the most bullied, be it at work, be it at home, be it in the community. And what is it that you watching us today, what is it that you're doing to help stop this? What is it that you're doing to help raise awareness? So we've created this platform whereby we've invited corporate leaders to come and speak about how they do curb this, how they do sanction and bullying and harassment, how they do manage this at work. Because sometimes we, we see a woman who has grown right up to the top of her career, she's a director, and then we keep saying she only got there because she's pretty, she only got there because she slept with this person, she only got there because, because, because. How long are women going to be made a token? I mean, I, I, I'm not going to call the name, but one of the research we carried out was in the bank. And this bank showed us that more women are branch managers. You know, more women, this bank is in Senegal, more women are branch managers. And when I asked the, the HR director, why is it that more women are branch managers and not men? And do you know what he said? He said, women have got this airs around them. Women have got this exciting look. Women are attractive and they're going to attract more clients in branch. I thought that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard from an HR director. And I felt really disappointed because we don't know why we are promoting women to branch managers. And another thing that he added was, Women are less likely to steal money from the banks. How can a woman be placed in a position of power because of the way she looks? Because she can attract men. Because she can keep the money safe. This is not a conversation that we should be having in 2000 and in 21st century, but this is a conversation that we're having. And I'm, I bet you it's not just in the bank. I think it's a lot of folks... Um, from facing you know roads as a bank for example one of the conditions for you to continue to keep your role is the number of cash that you bring in house isn't it and we can tell that we have more rich men than women isn't it and if i want a rich man to bring in his money in the bank 
What is it that I have to do? So that is an idea, or that is a, I, that was the idea behind this HR director's message to me, and I felt truly disappointed why, you know, a reputable bank would actually decide to use women as token because of their sexual orientation. And I can tell how much bullying and harassment has gone in that. So this is a time for us to understand that it's not just about the way we look, but it's about the competence. So back on the topic, bullying and harassment, how to identify. How do we identify if we've been bullied? Today on the show, as I have said, I've brought in two um, very, very important personalities. And they're going to be sharing their corporate experiences with us. They're going to be telling us you know, the different things that we need to do. Some of the other questions that we're going to be addressing today. Um, has bullying always been present in the work? Or has it recently gone worse? And another question that we'll be asking or that we'll be answering, how do you handle bullying generally, especially in the workplace? How do you handle this? Another question we'll be answering, what can you do if you are being bullied or harassed? What is it that you can do in your capacity, in your powers? Another question that we'll be answering, what are some policies and solutions to workplace bullying? Solutions, solutions, solutions. How does bullying and harassment affect quality of work done and productivity? We'll also be addressing what are the impact of bullying and harassment on the mental and physical health of people. Now, we have to address the recovery and re-empowerment after bullying and harassment. You know, that we talk, this is a whole topic on its own because we have been speaking to some psychologists and based on the conversation that we've had, we realized that the one hour, 25 minutes that we have on this show is not going to be enough for this particular topic to be covered. So we're going to leave this for next time. But we'll be answering all the other questions we'll be having you know, um, examples from the professionals that we have in place. And I'm going to start by popping Mimi on the screen. And if you're just joining us, I want to tell you who Mimi is. So Mimi, she's a lot more. But in the meantime, she's an HR professional and a doctorate student, philanthropist, and she owns Kilimanjaro Group, a real estate and entertainment company in New Jersey, in the US. And also, what I said earlier was that I have known Mimi for, you know, over the last 10 years. We connected through the social media and we've met in person. And we connected first because we were booty HR practitioners. If you're just joining us, my background is HR. You know, my background is HR. I've worked in the HR, in HR domain for um, over eight years. And I've also won the Corporate Awards, which is, which is HR focused over five years. So if you have to put all this together, I've got over um, five plus eight. I'm not very good with my math, but I'll tell you that's 13, isn't it? Yeah. So I've got over 13 years in an HR environment. And yeah, <laughs> so I think I have the authority to say some of the things that I'm going to be saying today. And of course, the guests I'm bringing on have also got the authority. So I'm just going to pop Mimi up and she will introduce herself in her work capacity as well. Hello, Mimi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Adeline. How are you? Hi, Adeline. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, girl. Thank you so much. I know I didn't give you enough time to, to, to prepare for this, but I'm sure this is something that you discuss every day at work. So what we're trying to establish today is we're trying to establish a few things about bullying and harassment. And from, a, from an HR perspective, we want to tap into your expertise, see how you deal with this at work, see how you can, you know, you can tell us some of the policies and how you as an HR practitioner um, implement these. We also want to find out um, what you advise and how you identify or some of the signs that you've had reported to you of someone who is being bullied. So before we actually start, I would love you to introduce yourself to our audience, or maybe I need to welcome all those who are joining us. Thank you, Goretti, for joining us. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Ethel. And uh, thank you so much, um, 
for joining in. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Ashu. So let's see what we can do. So over to you, Mimi. Can you introduce yourself, please? Of course. So um, thanks um, for, course. for having me. So um, thanks um, for, for having me. There's an echo. There's an echo. All right. Okay, I'm just going to mute myself. There we go. So um, again, thanks for having me. And um, thanks for such a great initiative, Women in Corporate Leadership. I think um, this goes to speak to um, what we're trying to do in our community and how we are trying to shape or sort of create a path for, for the women of tomorrow who are our daughters today. So for the most part, um, it's interesting how, you know, I'm an HR person, but I'm always, um, like you said, um, very happy, happy-go-lucky to, to, to a fault. But I'm Mimi Kwepo, um, known as Princess Kwepo because I married an amazing prince. And um, I am in the HR space. I love what I do. I enjoy what I do. But most, most um, especially, I am very, very big on anything that has to do with women and girls empowerment. So we'll talk about um, bullying a little bit today. And I'm looking forward to that because it does speak to some of the things that I do hold very, very close to my heart. So again, thanks for having me. I'm Princess Quepo, an HR professional, and I'm looking forward to um, sharing some knowledge, information, and um, just having a great show. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put myself back on the screen. Thank you so much, Mimi. This is a conversation which, as we were speaking today, we, we, should, we should raise our voices. We should talk about it. We should encourage others to talk about it. Tell me, how do you identify or what are some of the signs that have come to you as a nature practitioner? How can people identify if they're being bullied or harassed? I think, we, Mimi, for the sake of this conversation, we're going to try and put them together, just keep them together, bullying and harassment. But if there is any place that you want to differentiate both, please do feel free. So, so let's talk about bullying. What is bullying, right? That's the first so, thing. So let's talk about bullying. What is bullying, I mean, right? Crazy. That's the first thing. All right. So what is bullying? To me, right. I would say so as an HR professional, to me, I would um, say bullying an is basically a form of abuse, um, right? Bullying so, is basically oh. a form of abuse. I'm echoing. All right. So that's better. So bullying is a form of abuse, right? So if somebody is doing anything that makes you uncomfortable, um, if somebody is saying stuff that makes you uncomfortable, and, you know, you think that, you know, so speaking to them or you have tried talking to them and say, hey, you need to stop and they're not stopping and you really feel like, you know, they're abusing you, then you, you're right. You know, if you suspect it, the probability that you're right is probably high. So if you're being abused um, verbally, it could be emotionally as well and it could be mentally um, by somebody, then they're basically bullying you. If they want to push you into a corner, um, then they are bullying you. So if you find that you feel uncomfortable around a coworker or a, a senior manager or a manager, the probability that you're, you're, you're right and you're being bullied is, is very high. Will you say the same for harassment? I would say I harassment, would say harassment um, like, you um, like you mentioned, you could sort of, could put, sort of put both, in the, both in the same bucket because if you think if about, you think about it, it, um, when um, somebody when is sexually, sexually harassing, harassing you, they're abusing, they're abusing you, you, right? right? Um, when um, somebody, when somebody is, is um, making um, you making feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable, they could be they making could you feel uncomfortable because of harassment or because of bullying, right? So you could put both in the same bucket. However, like you mentioned earlier, um, I think harassment most of the time is physical, right? Harassment is the person, is, the is, person aggressive. is aggressive. 
Um, the person um, the is intimidating. Person is I mean, intimidating. bullying is also, bullying is also you, know, you know, you can find intimidation, find intimidation bullying. bullying. But when somebody, but when somebody is abrasive, abrasive it's, in it's in your face, it's in your face, it's in your face they're, they're harassing you. you. The same, the same, the same, the same might go for, for bullying in the sense that, that a lot of time bullies want to intimidate you. So, so tell me, Mimi, at work, you know, at work, is this something that you see a lot where you work or is this something that you see a bit? Do people actually come up to you? HR, is this cases that you deal with at work? Do you deal with cases of bullying and harassment? You know, I know you're in the third, first world country and <laughs> sometimes you say it doesn't happen in England, it doesn't happen in America, it doesn't happen in Paris, it's only in Africa. Is this actually present at work in the workplace? So, so I, I, unfortunately, unfortunately bullying, bullying is, everywhere, is everywhere, right? right? Mm -hmm. At work, at, work, at home, home, at school. schools. Um, but I have but to I say, have in the Western world, world, bullying, bullying is, is more is present, present, just as it's present, present in, the, in, the, in the third, in the world. third world. And I must, and I must say, say 66, 66 million, million of workers, workers report of being bullied, being bullied every year. Every so year. think so about it. It's everywhere. It's around us. Um, um, in, this, in this, in the Western, Western world, world or in the USA or in, USA or in Europe, Europe, people do people report, report bullying, bullying a lot. A lot. And um, I think I that's think something that, that as, as HR, HR, we encourage, we encourage because, because, you know, you know if, we if we do not encourage people, people to speak up or people, or people to, complain, to complain, then we then end up we with end a working environment that is not conducive for production or for productivity. I keep going. <laughs> so, well, um, Adele, I think, Adele, I think you're glitching or something. Or something. Yeah, that's 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 a network. But I, we're back now. <laughs> we're back now. So, tell me, are there any policies in place that you want to mention as a nature practitioner, and is it is it necessary? So, so I, would I would say, say as a term. term Person, person, I would say, I would if, say you if you feel bullying, bullying at, work, at work, they are set in, in most companies, companies that, you, that you could follow, you could follow to, address to address bullying at work, work right? right? Usually, Usually, I would say, I would say start off by, by speaking, speaking to your manager, to your manager and, then and then maybe, maybe proceed, proceed to speaking to, speaking to maybe your HR, maybe your HR business partner. partner. So whoever is the whoever HR is the business HR partner for your group or your team. And then, and then they usually employ a program in most, most corporations corporation to, to address bullying and harassment. Bullying and harassment. So take advantage, take advantage of, those. of those. Speak to your manager, speak to, your speak to HR, speak to, you know, employee assistant program. At, you know, in our community, because we have bullying everywhere, you know, speak to the police, speak to somebody that could get you the get help, you help that, that you need. You need. Um, in, um, schools, in schools, I would say, I would speak, say to speak to a teacher, a, teacher, a principal, a, principal, um, a, school, a school nurse, nurse or, or even, the resources, even the resources that they have in schools have in for school bullying. You take advantage, you take advantage of that. The that. reason these resources, these resources are, there are there is because, because bullying, bullying is, real, is real and it's literally, literally everywhere. everywhere. I think you need to, you need to give us... Um, so with regards to policies, sorry, I'm just moving my, my space because of the network issue. With regards to policies, do you get the policies from the state or is it just a nice to have that your corporation decided to put in place? And why was this policy implemented? If you do have one in place, why was it implemented? Was it implemented because it's law or was it implemented because it's nice to have? Or was it implemented because the, the, the cases of bullying and harassment have become too strong in the workplace? I think, I think most, companies most companies have, have um, um, a, bully a bully or harassment, or harassment policy. policy. Um, um, most corporations corporation make, sure make sure that, that they, implement they implement this because, because when, you when you are dealing, are dealing with people, with people the probability, the probability that, that you can be with harassment and bullying is very, is very high. high. And, and corporations, corporations spend tons, tons, of, tons of, money of money every year, every year dealing, dealing with, with um, harassment, harassment, bullying, bullying 
cases, cases right? right? So, so the policies, the policies are, there are there because companies, companies implement them. In my, in my case, case, I know I that know every that company I've worked, worked always, always had a harassment and bullying policy. policy. And I and also, I think, also think, think in the US, in the US even, even state, state level, level, there are posters that employers are, are required to put on the wall. Um, um, to make sure to make that sure the, working, the working, environment working environment is safe, safe and is free, and of, free harassment. of harassment. All right, thank you, thank you very much, Mimi. Have you ever had, um, have you ever had a member of your team or a member of your company accused? Let me not put, let me put accused, accused you of bullying at work? No, no. So, oh, I've never, I've never, <laughs> so I've, I've never, never been, been accused, accused of, bullying of bullying because, because um, um, I, 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 like, you know, I, you know, talk, I talk about, about the power of positive thinking, thinking all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I and I think that, that is something, is something that, that I embody. I embody. Mm -hmm. so, so usually, usually wherever, wherever I, go, I go, I take my positivity with me. I strive in seeing people happy. I, I do well, do well when, people when people are in their element, element and, they're and they're successful. successful. So, so even if even I try, I, try, I can't, I can't be a bully. Be <laughs> 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 thank you, thank you very much, Mimi. Has is is um you know has this always been present in the workplace or has it recently gotten worse? Bullying and harassment. How will you how would you say that? Do you think this is something that has always been there, or do you think it's becoming more and more rampant? I think, I think bullying has always, always been, been in the place, place right? right? Bullying, bullying is not something, not something that, that just that started, started in the 21st century. As an HR, as an HR professional, professional, you know, you know as, as, I as I read and I do and research, research now, now for my doctorate, I'm finding, I'm finding that, that a lot of, a lot of issues, issues or workplace um, um, situations that, that were not were made, made public, public in the past, in the past. They're being, They're being more, more and more, and more public, public today, today because, because of technology, technology and, social and social media. media. Mm -hmm. so, so bullying, bullying did, not did not start today, today did, not did not start yesterday, yesterday, yesterday and, it's and, not and it's not gonna, gonna stop, stop today, today or tomorrow. Or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. which, which is why, why we, we must, must learn, learn how, how to speak up. up. And because this platform is women in leadership, I would like I would to say, like to say women, women in general, in general need, to need to learn how to, how to speak, speak up. up. Even, if, Even you're if you're not speaking, speaking up for yourself, speak up because, because you, don't you don't want, don't the, want the next, next lady, lady to go through, through what you are going, going through. Or go, go through, through what somebody, somebody else might have gone through and, and, were not, and they were not and strong or brave enough to speak up. We have to be mindful that one in five complaints of, of bullying, bullying or sexual, or sexual harassment, harassment is made, made by, men. by men. What does, what that, does tell that tell you? you? Four, Four out of out those five, five complaints, complaints are made by are made women. By women. Mm. So, so as, as women, women, we, we must, must learn how to, how to speak, speak up, up, make our, our voice heard, heard, and address some, some of these issues, issues because they're not they're going away. And, and they will they affect, affect us, us in the long, the long run, run and affect and everybody, everybody else that is around us. us. So, so I don't care I don't if it's a work, I don't care if it's at home, I don't care if it's on the street, you have, have to address, to address it, it before it consumes you. So Mimi, tell me, investigation, right? Investigation. I know sometimes, or I know most often, when a case is being reported, we need to, as HR practitioners, we need to carry out investigation. How do you investigate bullying in particular? Because according to the definition that we've just read, we've realized that most often it's being done when, you know, in private, we know weakness. And, you know, how do you trust the person who comes up to you, sending an email or come to HR and say, hey, I think I'm being bullied. How do you investigate? How do you trust this person? Has it? Have you ever been in a position where you, you carry out an investigation and realize the other person was you know, just telling a lie? Or tell us the process, internal process. How do you investigate this? So, so first, first uh, it's, it's very, very, very important, important to make, to make sure, sure that, that 
when you set when you set up to make a complaint, you have all your eyes and you know dotted on your T's crossed, right? Um, because unfortunately, there are times when people lie. And because, of, and that, because of that, you know, you know the people that the people truly, that go, truly through go through the bullying and the harassment turn, turn to, to, you know, you not want to talk for fear that they won't believe them. them. But, but I always, I always advise, advise that, that if you're going, if you're going through, through any kind of bullying, any kind of harassment, speak with, speak your, with your manager. Your manager. Speak, and speak your manager, your manager not, not would escalate to an HR business person or a business HR person. And, uh, and uh, you know, an you know, investigation, investigation will be launched. Will be launched. So, usually so usually what they, what do, they do is, is they, they, they will have a conversation, have a conversation with, you, with you. And, and then, then HR, HR will go ahead, go ahead and, look and, and look into the matter. matter. And, and every company is different. different. Some, Some companies, companies have, have a compliance department that would, would give, guidelines give guidelines on how to go about it. And some companies have an HR department that is fully equipped. To, to go about, go about looking, looking for information, for information and, doing and doing the investigation. The investigation. Most, Most of the time, of the time when, when bullying, bullying or, harassment or harassment complaints, complaints are, made, are made, there's usually, there's usually something, something underneath. underneath. There's, there's no, no smoke, smoke without fire, fire for the most part. And, and when, when the investigation is launched, launched which, which involves speaking, speaking to the to victim, the victim um, looking, um, looking into, into you, know, you know the complaints, the complaints and, and reason why, reason why this, this person felt, felt bullied, bullied or harassed, harassed. They, usually, they usually HR usually comes up with, with a solution, a solution at, the at the end. I don't know. Did I ask for your questions? Yeah, I think you did. But I mean, in, in your in your investigation process, has it ever? Have you ever been um, in an investigation where you know a complaint? of being bullied or harassed was not right. So, so I've, I've never, as an HR professional, professional, I've never, I've never ever, ever been in a situation, a situation where, where somebody, somebody lied. lied. However, However, I've been I've in a situation, been in a situation where, where the person, the person was, telling was telling the truth, the truth and, and we, we found, found out that, that, that um, um, they were they being bullied. bullied and, and we could, we could tell, tell because, because um, it, um, affected it affected them, them you know, you know productivity-wise, productivity wise. And, and you could, you tell, could tell that, that it, was it was affecting other, other members, members of the team, the team because, because the person, the person has, has a friend who was working, was working with them, and with she them, actually and shared she actually shared that, you know, I don't like the way this person treats me or this person talks to me. And then it did not only become a problem between the victim and the... Bully, bully, but, but now, now there were other, other team members, members that were, that getting, were involved getting involved because the relationship, the relationship that they had with the, the victim was close. Was and close. now they're looking and at the book, book they're like, okay, look at this person, you know, person, then, you know, they talk. You know, and at the end of the day, it doesn't make for a good working environment, which is why it's good to talk about it so it gets addressed. So tell us a situation where. Um, tell us what happens if you find out someone is a bully at work. What is it? Is it how is it classified in your HR? You know how is it classified, or how do you deal with that? If you find out that this person is a bully, or this person has been, you know, is is an harasser. So what are some of the, you know, what are some of the how do they call that in English? What are some of the repercussions? The repercussions. The repercussions. Yeah. So. so Bullying costs a bullying lot of money for companies, right? Company, right? Companies, companies in the USA, in the USA spent, um, I want to say, a few years, a few years ago, the number ago, was, number was two, two, I want to say, say 200 billion. billion. A few, I want to say 2016. Few, so, say 2016. It's, it's expensive when it's, you have a bully. When, you have when a it becomes a lawsuit, when it becomes a mitigation, where you have to... Um, arrange, you arrange, know, and you, you say, know, okay, and you say, okay, we'll pay you this, we'll pay and you this, quiet. And you quiet. Unfortunately, it costs Unfortunately, a lot of money for company, right? right? It also, it also trying to make a workplace, to make a workplace or company, or company um, um, lose, lose business. business. So for that, so for that reason, reason, once an once investigation, investigation is launched, launched 
if the if person, the person is, found is found to be, to be a, bully, a bully, it usually, it usually leads to litigation. But this is this is not the this is not the company's fault, right? This is an individual's fault, for example. Why would the company have to spend money whereby it's um I mean I mean it's just an, another member of staff who, who who's been the bully? Why would it be the company's is it because the company did not address it properly or why would that why would it be a case where the company will have to spend on it? So, so let let's let, let talk about bullying in the workplace, right? right? So let's, so assume, let's assume that, that you're being you're bullied, bullied at work, at work and, and you speak, you speak to, your to your manager and say, and well, say, well, well you know, this person this is person abusing me. I am starting to feel starting psychologically, to feel and, psychologically mentally drained. and mentally drained. I don't even, I don't, I don't even, want, to come, I don't to want work to come to work because now because I'm now beginning I'm to beginning feel to like, like my workplace, my workplace is, is not a comfortable, not a comfortable place, place to be. To be. At that, At that point, point, if the, if manager, the manager doesn't address, doesn't address it, it, the HR, the HR person, person doesn't, doesn't address it, address it and let's and say, let's in, say a rare in a red case, case, that leads to, to that person harming, harming themselves, themselves, it becomes, it a, becomes company a company problem, problem because, because the company, the company should have addressed, addressed it, it when the, when the, the victim the brought, brought it up. up. And you have and to you also be mindful that when bullying occurs at work, it's a company, it's a company thing. thing. That's, That's why, why um, the, company the company has, has processes, processes and procedures in place, place and policies to make, to make sure, sure that the that environment, environment is conducive, conducive safe, safe for, everybody for everybody that works that there to be productive, to be productive and, and to be happy, to be happy on, a on a daily basis. Now, Princess Mimi, I am I am in my job. I love my job. I love working for this company, but unfortunately, I'm being bullied by my manager. Now, I can go to HR. I can resign. I can do whatever I want. I have my eyes on a position that is at the top. I really want to climb. I really want to get to that position. But my manager was supposed to be the person to help me get to that position. It's the same person who is bullying me and who is stopping me from, you know, from climbing. What should I do when I'm being bullied by my manager? And how do I gain um, proof, you know? How do I gain proof to show that my manager, for example, is bullying me? So the question is simple. It's basically, what should I do when I'm being bullied? So, so your manager has a manager. But you, but also, you have also have HR, HR, right? Right. So, so like you like mentioned when you did your introduction, introduction, I think, think we're we'll past the century, the century where, where uh, women, women had, had to, to just deal with, deal it, with it, just accept, accept it, it, just do what do they what could, could do to, to get, get back, get back. Mm -hmm. right? Right. Most, Most companies company have systems in place. As a, As a matter of fact, fact you could actually, actually make, a, make call a call without, without even saying who you are anonymously, anonymously on 800 numbers. numbers. And, and an investigation, investigation will be launched. Will be launched. And, and if that, if is, that found is found true, actions, actions will be taken. Will be taken. So, so, going back, going to, back the question, to the question, my, my manager is harassing me. I have my eye on a position at the top that I know I can make it. Because, because I have I what it have takes what to be successful, successful in that role. In that role. Mm -hmm. My question, My question again is, is, why should you change, change yourself? Change because, yourself because, because somebody has self-esteem self issues. Because I believe, I believe most people that bully are dealing, dealing with personal self-esteem self issues. Issue. Mm -hmm. so, so you are responsible, are responsible for, you, for you, and you are responsible for your happiness and your mental state. And you are so the right thing to do is to so speak right to, to an HR to business partner. A HR business and partner. you have the right to tell them that and you have the right to, to tell them that just between the two of you just because the two of you, you are worried about how your manager is going, going to react. You can also, you can look, also for look for employee assistance, employee program, assistance within program within your company. Within your company. Most, companies Most companies have them. Have them. At times they are linked to HR. to HR. At times they are linked to corporate culture. Um, groups. And you, and have, a you have a conversation with the person, with the person and, say, and listen, say, listen, 
this is happening. This is happening. I would like, I would for, like you for you to give me the give resources, me the resources I, need I need and help and me help navigate, navigate this, this particular, particular issue. issue. Usually, Usually the, 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 people the people in this in department this are, are more than more willing and ready, and ready to jump, to jump on, board on board and help, help you with whatever, whatever situation, situation you're going, going through. through. Because, because if, they, if don't, they don't, there might there be might a problem at the end. I mean, you see, I love, I love the way you, 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 you telling this thing. I mean, it's, it's so natural. I mean, I could tell, you know, the minute you start, you start talking, I could tell you, you, you're so HR and, <laughs> and my thing. <laughs> these are some of the things that you, that you, you, you've dealt with over and over. So it's, it's very natural to you. Now tell me, do you think if you're being bullied at work, it automatically affects your performance? Yes. So, so let, let's look at bullying let's look at as bullying a problem, as that, a problem a that a person has. When you have, when a, you problem, have a problem, does it does affect, it affect any, problem? any problem? Let's think let's about, it. about it. Let it be let that, it be you, that know, you know you have a child who is sick at home. Let it be that, be that you, don't that you don't speak to your, your colleague. colleague. What, what happens when you see that colleague at home? At work. Sorry. You are immediately. Feel attacked, feel attacked with you, correct? correct? Imagine, Imagine you go, you to, go work to work and you let your child, child at the hospital, the hospital which is why as women, women, when we work, when for, we work for companies, we need to, we need make, to sure make sure we know, we know about, about the company, the company policy, policy that, that surrounds, surrounds work-life work balance. balance. Because, because it's very, it's very important, important, important because for the most part, Women, women are the ones, are the ones that, that carry the family, the family on, on their back, back. like exactly. it or not. Yeah. So, so you're, dealing you're dealing with any, with kind, any of kind of issue, issue. It, affects it affects you. you. So, so imagine, imagine dealing, dealing with, with a bully at work. When you start, when you start worrying, worrying about, about oh, oh, maybe I don't want to go to the break room because he or she is there. I don't want uh, to get up from my I don't want to get here up from because my maybe he's standing behind me. He's standing behind it affects you not only it mentally, affects you not only but mentally, it affects your productivity. But it affects your productivity. Because the time you are spending to, to think about how you're going to navigate, navigate the, 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 the company the restaurant or dining room or, dining room or, the, or the, 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 the office space, the time space, you could have invested in thinking about how to better do your job. So productivity is definitely, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely. play, definitely. So would this be the same as um, a kind of psychological damage at work? Because you know, when we when we sign in a contract to work for for a company, we have the, you know, we have both the the the, the actual physical and the psychological contracts that we signed, and especially if you're being bullied by your man, someone from the management team or your manager. Would you say the psychological contract is being broken in the case of yes, yes. harassment? Yes, yes. And, and that's why, why companies, companies, going back going to your back question, to your question, mm -hmm. your question your that's question, why that's companies, why companies end up, up being, being the ones spending, ones spending the, money the money when, when bullying and harassment occurs. Because, because if you, if think, you think about, about it, it, once you're, you're emotionally, emotionally impacted, impacted by bullying, or, or you're, you're in any in kind any of way kind of physically, physically, you know, you know affected, affected, it might it end up to depression, right? right? What are you like it or like not? It, or it not, starts affecting, start affecting your behavior, your behavior towards, other towards other people, people. Right? right? It could be, it could be um, the next, next person close, close to you at work. At work. It could it even be at home. You come home and you're just down because you had to deal with all this abuse. Or harassment, or harassment at work. At work. So, so my, my take, take on it is, which every, every company should have a have zero, zero tolerance, tolerance on, on bullying and abuse. And, abuse. and if you are being, being abused or being or bullied, being bullied you, have you have to speak, to speak up. up. Because, because the, sooner the sooner you address, you address it, it, the better. The better. Thank you, Mimi. I'm just going to pop you uh, on the back end for now, but I'm going to bring you in the last... Um, 
10 minutes so we can talk a little bit about sexual harassment in detail or in, oh, in Lord, the Lord. picture before we know we, you remember the the next conversation is going to be sexual harassment this is the general sense so but we're going to touch into that a little bit just before we go but i'll pop you in the back end and then i'm going to bring Rosalind in the front end and then i'll bring you in in about 20 minutes if we have time so that we can just quickly talk about that sexual harassment introductory part before we 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 we, we well, we introduce that sexual harassment bit before our next session. So for now, let me get you off and let me thank you. Thank you All so right, much. Right, Great insights. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We're talking about bullying and harassment at work. This is a big picture, bullying and harassment. This week we're talking about bullying and harassment, but the next conversation is gonna be about sexual harassment, gender-based harassment. So right now I'm gonna bring in Rosalind. The reason why Rosalind is joining us today is because she runs a company. And we keep saying companies should do this, companies should do that. And bringing someone who owns her own company is a kind of, we're just asking her how accountable she is, you know, on bullying and harassment, how she manages it, how she identifies it, how she deals with it, how she identifies. And then we're going to bring Mimi again on the screen and then we'll talk about the sexual harassment and then we'll close for the day. So I'll pop in Rosalind. Hiya, Rosalind. Hi, Adeline. Hi, Adeline. <laughs> how are you? I'm fine, thank you. you. I'm fine, thank joining you. joining us. Yes. Rosalind Fonkwa Munjongi is the Managing Director of Redline Care. And I have a little bio of Rosalind, which I'm just going to read the introduction and then I'll let her tell us who she is. Rosalind is the Founder Managing Director of Redline Care. It's a London-based care company and that provides special care com uh, cop special care services she has a degree in business management and it and a level five leadership management she's also an activist who raises awareness on sexual abuse and other form of gender-based violence rosalind is also the founder of non-governmental organization called voice of hope based in the uk and in cameroon apart from that she's a filmmaker and if you haven't watched it yet please do go to amazon just click on Bridge of Trust and then you will see this movie that has been produced by Roslyn. This movie has recorded a lot of success, won a lot of awards, touched lives and changed lives. So I'm just going to pop Roslyn in. Hello. 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 Tell us about you. Right, I think right, you said, said it all. Okay, <laughs> Redline Care. Tell, tell us about Redline Care. What kind of a structure have you got at work? What kind of a structure have you got? Well, Redline Care is well, a Redline care, care, is care, a company. care company. We provide domiciliary care, 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 care services and training. And, training. and um, basically, and, um, basically, we've been, we've been in business for like the last eight years. And yeah, we are. We're rolling. We're rolling. <laughs> So, Rosalie, we're talking today about bullying and harassment. As someone who has her own company and who employs loads of people around, not just in the UK, the UK and also in Cameroon, tell us, do you think there is bullying and harassment at work? Definitely. Definitely. There is there bullying and harassment in every workplace. We just have to um, put whatever we've got in place to um, make sure that we minimize this from coming up. I know we, we've, we've discussed bullying and harassment. Mimi and I have discussed bullying and harassment. In your own words, if you have to say something very little about bullying and harassment, how would you say it? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so yes. um, I think Mimi actually said it all. It's mainly really about um, making someone feel uncomfortable, kind of taking their dignity away from her and making it from them and making them... Um, Really, basically, it's really making people feel uncomfortable, and it comes at various levels. So, obviously, I'm sure we will explore that in the course of the program. Okay, so at work, yeah, work, yeah, at work. Okay, let's talk about um, let's talk about identifying. You know, sometimes you work with very vulnerable people, and sometimes you're not. You you you're usually not on the field with with your with your staff. You know, yeah, yeah. Like office base, and they're out there. How do you deal with bullying and harassment? How how does it come to your attention? In your office space, has there been, you know, have there been any bullying and harassment that you want to share? And how did you deal with as someone who owns their own company? Okay, I would answer, okay, I would um, answer both questions. Um, both questions. So, so obviously, obviously, I've got a lot of got staff lot working of on the field. Working we on the field. are in, we in the are office. In the office. So the way so we the get way to know about bullying and harassment, harassment is through reporting. reporting. 
what we intend what to do when we recruit our, our staff before they go out, they go out. we go we through go the bullying and harassment, and harassment policy, policy with them. With them. So it's covered in their training, so and, in their training they and they understand, and they know the protocols that, that, that we have in place to help them, and and what they have to do to, they have to, do to not um, not, not to be not the harasser. So so once they've got once that, they've information, got that information, information, we know that they we know will equip them. them. So, so what happens what is they just come back to us, report whatever has happened. And on the, and other, on the hand, other hand, my client my cannot also call, call to, to report, report bullying, bullying or harassment, or harassment that's, that's taking place, place either, either between, between my, workers my workers or from my workers, from my workers to, them. to them. So it's so mainly through reporting. reporting. So when, so when we, talk, we about talk about the office, office I, don't I don't tend to really get, really get that, situation that situation in the office, in the office because, because as soon as, as I sense it, I tend to put things in place, things in place to prevent it to take it, take it uh, from, from going for, forward, forward. further. So I've so had a case, for example, where I've where had a younger, younger worker, worker in the office, in the office. And, because and because she's very she's young, young and, and the other, other member of staff was a much older, older, older person. person. So, so she, she, she was kind of talking, of talking down on her, her. And in the way she was a bit demeaning. And at some point, a young lady came to me and said, we comfortable the way the other person to them. So, so that was that was straightforward for me. I had a meeting with the, the person who was uh, making the other person feel uncomfortable. And once we were waiting, she identified that maybe she was too heavy handed on the young lady. And for me, that worked because after that, we were able to have a good working environment. The girl was able to feed back to me that she is happier at work and she relates much better with this person. So at my workplace, this is like the level I've had. So far, I haven't had anything more serious than that. So have you ever been accused of being a bully at work by a, a staff and how did you deal with that? I've never, I've never been accused of being a bully because, because by nature, by nature, I'm, I'm a very calm person, person. and I'm, and I'm, 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 Obviously, sometimes when people come with their concerns, they expect a particular response, but there is a policy to follow and there are things to consider. So as, employ as employers, we find ourselves sometimes in a position where, unfortunately, the, 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 the outcome would not necessarily be what the person wants to hear. But what I tend to do is I always try to stay in line with the law, what the law says, with my policies, and I always try to have a good relationship with my staff. I build trust with them in a way that they will hardly get to a point where they actually feel that I am bullying them because the communication flows. I make sure that we have an open and honest culture where we they feel free to talk to me. I talk to them. And I think that's really helped me from it's really helped me. So yeah. Tell me, Rosalie. I, I know maybe you've not had that, you know, that um big issues, but if you are advising your staff, you know, yeah. Yeah. what would you tell them? they should do when they feel they're being bullied at work? What is it that you're going to tell them? The first thing we do before they go out, we give them a staff handbook. And in their staff handbook, our policies are clearly outlined out in there and the procedure is in there. So we obviously tell them that they need to be able to identify the different signs of bullying and form sign form and they should know the different forms of harassment so even in training we cover all of these because someone might go out to work and not actually realize that they've been bullied or they, they've been harassed at work so it's important for us to make sure that all our staff know what the signs are so they can pick it up when they when they're out there and we we also do this because we expect them not to do the same to clients or to their colleagues so for us this is what we do we instill this knowledge in them and we tell them what the guidelines are and when you're signing your contract you know that you're signing a legal document which includes an anti-bullying and harassment policy so obviously you they know that if it happens 
there will definitely be repercussions. And obviously they know the disciplinary procedure. So they know that it's closely linked. If it's upheld, then obviously we go down that road. So, um, Rosalie, I, I just want to, I know that some people have joined us now, and I just want to, based on what you've said and what Mimi said earlier, I've been taking down notes, and I just want to do a recap of some of the points that both yourself and Mimi have mentioned. Um, when someone feels they're being bullied, the first thing they need to do is they need, they need to stay calm, they need to stay firm, and they need to try and keep up their a confident appearance, because if someone feels that you are not, you know, confident or you're not comfortable, they're going to keep doing it, right? Yeah. So the second thing is you need to, as was being just said, you need to understand the policy and also understand your role in the company, meaning your job description. You need to check what you're supposed to be doing so that if there is something that someone is pushing, um, pushing to you and this is a part of what you're supposed to do, you have a right to either do it or not do it and you know what to do after that so if you suddenly for example find yourself doing um maybe i can say menial task or being given an increased workload on shorter deadlines and it's not in your contract and this is coming from your manager according to me me you need to you need to make sure you you you, you approach them you know immediately you call the helpline you you, you go to the HR or you speak to your business partner because this might be a sign of bullying. Um, Mimi also said you need to try and get witness to bullying, you know, incident because sometimes um, people need to, to believe you, you know. She also mentioned there is no smoke without fire, but then we cannot just base all our, we can't base all our facts on the no smoke without fire. So as someone who works in an environment where you might be potentially bullied, it is, it is you know, it is important for you to make sure you keep any documentation keep email look for proof as much as possible so that when you go to speak to the um, to speak to the hr business partner or the, the school council or the, the work counselor or the helpline that you have in place you'll be able to say this is a proof that i have this is an email this is a tone that was used because this is not usually physical this can come in the way you sound your attitude, your body language, the tone that you use, all these can constitute part of that. And Mimi also said, Rosin has just mentioned as well, that you, you, it, it is, um, you should take, um, you should be trained, that it is important for you to be trained. So the, the company has to train the staff and HR need to allocate the right training. Because sometimes, as, as I was chatting this morning with Mimi, sometimes people don't understand that they are bullies, you know, we don't understand that we are bullies. We're just doing things because maybe we want things to be done. We really don't go out to say, I want to bully that person to do what I want. But you just do these things and then at the end you find yourself doing it over and over without knowing that this person is actually in pain, in stress. So Rosalind mentioned and Mimi mentioned that we not, we have to we have to undergo uh, we have to undergo um, a stress management course, you know, so that we'll be able to to manage the whole thing without really breaking our nerves. And also, we need to be assertive. We need to be assertive um, about our environment so we can take that training as well. Moreover, in order for us to, to, to ensure that we are psychologically healthy, you know, we, we have to make sure the environment that we work is, is free of bullying. Meaning once you spot that someone is bullying you, you need to first, as Mimi said, and as Rosalie said, talk to the person. There's always a procedure in place. Talk to the person, get the person to understand that what they are doing is affecting you psychologically. Because once you do not talk to that person, they might not even be aware that what they are doing is affecting you psychologically. So it is your place, you know as a colleague or co-worker to talk to the person. Worst case scenario, as Mimi has said, get emotional support. Get emotional support from your family, from your friends, from your company. And in some cases, as a national prof professional, I'll advise you, you can take off sick. When you feel that the stress is too much, the pressure is too much, write to your HR, tell them you feel stress, you're under pressure, and you want to take you know, a, a leave. You want to take a sick leave in order to deal with all these things that that's 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 you know that's worrying you. Now, Rosalind, tell me, do you think without the um, the um, anti bullying and harassment act, would you as an employer have put something in place to help stop 
bullying and harassment at work? Do you think this is something you would have put? And do you think you would have done it differently? I mean, I think I mean, in I my experience, I, I would definitely, definitely have, have had something, something in place. In place. Because my staff tend to work out and they go into people's houses. So anything could happen in there. And the thing is, if I don't have anything to protect my staff, I don't. if I don't have anything to protect the people I work with, it puts me in a very difficult position. So I would still have gone ahead and put it in place just so everyone works within guidelines. So talking about working within guidelines, have you ever, or um, maybe not, but what would you do mm -hmm. if you, if a member of staff, what would you do to a bully? Right, what right. I would what do to a bully, obviously, I mean, obviously, obviously you have to investigate them to establish that they're bully. But once you, you, you've established that, you obviously have to do various things. You either go down the line of disciplinary, it depends on what it is. Yeah, it depends on the seriousness of, um, of what it is. But you either go down the route of disciplinary, you go down the route of training. Because sometimes bullies, like you rightly said, they don't know the bullying. Someone could have an attitude and a way of talking that could be quite intimidating. That another, that another person perceives, perceives it like it as bullying. So it's about, so it's understanding, about understanding those different things. things. So it would so either it would be either training, training, maybe moving, moving them, them from, from where, they're where they're working currently, currently changing, changing their, their, their work their environment, environment, disciplinary, disciplinary or, or maybe finding another role. Or what's or case, what's case, 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 case all right, thank you so much, Rosalind. I mean, Rosalind is checking in from London and she owns a company in the UK if you're just joining us. And I'm, I just want to find out how she deals with bullying and harassment at work and if she's ever had a situation and how she dealt with it. Also, to find out her opinion about bullying and harassment and also to find out from her if she thinks bullying is something that has always been there and if she feels it has reduced over the, the you know the last few years personally um from an HR perspective i would say i think it has reduced because more and more uh, policies have been placed, put in place robust you know and as i said earlier when i said it, it starts from childhood you know once you see that at school you get these guys who are bullies you also see that automatically they they they, they, will, they will continue you know they will continue to to do things like that until they grow older so as parents if we don't put um if we don't train our kids to 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 be considerate and to to pay special attention to how people feel then they're going to grow up not thinking or not caring about how people feel and automatically when they start working they wouldn't care once they want to get that promotion or once they want to get to where they want to go, then they will continue to bully. Mm -hmm. And Rosalind is the director of Reliant Care and the speaker before Rosalind has been Mimi Kwepo. I'm going to bring back Mimi on the screen because I want us to talk a little bit, an intro on sexual harassment. And why I want us to talk about sexual harassment is because this is a whole topic on its own. We're just going to introduce and talk about it for the next 10 minutes and then we... We're going to book another date with both speakers, both Mimi and Rosalind, and we're going to come back here and talk about sexual harassment and what we can do as women, what we can do as leaders, what we can do as people in decision-making position to really curb that, what we can put in place. So, hello, Mimi, again. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. I'm back. Oh, Mimi, that's Rosalind. Hey, Rosie, how are you? Hey, Rosie, I'm how are you? fine, Mimi. I'm fine, Mimi. <laughs> you met backstage and you met before, so, me. of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mimi, we, we just want to talk about... How are you, Rosie? How are you, Rosie? Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Okay. I'm good, Mimi. Okay. We hear her. Okay. All right, I think we can we can hear each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can hear each other, which is uh, sometimes it could be a pain, but we are here. So sexual harassment, I will talk a little bit about sexual harassment because, uh, as I said earlier, sexual harassment is um oh before before I even start, I read an amazing amazing documentation from Comfort uh, Komi Musi. I'm sure you know her. She's a very popular journalist in Cameroon and she documented 
you know, she, she documented her journey into journalism, you know, in Cameroon. She started her story, but when she started working in Cameroon, a young graduate, journalism, she went to her first interview and she was being asked to meet her employer or her potential employer in a hotel room. Wow. Wow. Not in a hotel lobby, in a hotel room. <laughs> and that is how sexual harassment starts. Fortunately, she was a very smart kid at the time. She's been trained properly and she said, you know what? That's going to be the last thing that I will do. Post, you know, post that as a professional in her career, she has done a lot of research on sexual harassment and she shared that with me. Now, I told her I was going to be sharing some of her findings, but as we can see that this is not a topic that we can exhaust in a day. We're going to book the next session whereby we're going to come online and we're going to talk about sexual harassment on its own. And then we can bring some of her findings and if she's available, she can join us to carry out this conversation so that she too can talk about her experience. But for now, let's talk about sexual harassment. Mimi, let's start with you. What would you say sexual harassment is? So, so when we, when think, we think about, about harassment, harassment it's, it's any kind of interaction that makes us uncomfortable, right? So the term on its own, sexual harassment, is any unwelcome verbal, physical, or attention that you get from somebody in a sexual way. So any kind of sexual contact or behavior that makes you uncomfortable, you know, is sexual harassment. And unfortunately, it occurs a lot um, in our world today. So um, if it's uncomfortable and, you know, it has to do with sexual and you don't feel like you like it, you're not, you're not enjoying the attention, you have to speak up. Because it could also be by way of somebody talking to you, the kind of words and body language. So if you find that anything is unwelcome, verbally or physically you have to know that if it doesn't feel right it's not right thank you <laughs> thank you mimi rosden do you think sexual harassment is a topic that should be exhausted yes i think yes, it needs a lot, lot of attention of because it happens a lot at the workplace so it definitely needs to be exhausted And do you think, as Mimi, Mimi just described it, do you think this is something that uh, should that is only done when the act has been done, or do you think it comes in all shape, form, and size? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's really it any form of inappropriate sexual behavior. So whether it's advancement, whether it's physical, any form of inappropriate sexual behavior from the beginning of just the looks to the actual, I would call it penetration, they all fall into one basket. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mimi, why do you think, uh, or how do you think we can, I mean, this is just an insight into the conversation we'll be having this. How do you think we can, we can deal with, um, with, with sexual harassment in our community at work? How do you think we should deal with it? Should we deal with this as we deal with any normal harassment or should we deal with this like differently? I think, I think um, um, sexual harassment, especially in our community, it's something that we need to deal with it very harshly, right? Because it usually starts with probably um, the perpetrator would test the water, okay? It could start with, you know, slight comments and conversation and it might lead up to unwanted, you know, text messages. And like Rosie said, all the way to the actual penetration. If you're uncomfortable about something, you have to speak up about it. But I have to say, um, in our community, and I'm stepping away from the corporate world, and I know this is a, a topic that you like to get into, or we should be getting into um, in some, you know, in some maybe weeks or months to come. Um, it's important that we know that um, we have to be comfortable enough in ourselves to be able to say, you know what, this doesn't feel right. I don't want it, and you need to stop. I, I, think think that's that's a, I can hear you. I can hear you. And I, <laughs> that that I need to be I need serious. To be serious. <laughs> <laughs>
you are very serious. What you're saying makes a lot of sense. Now I'm not. I have my HR face, face on. on. Yeah, put on your HR face. <laughs> <laughs> so you think you think this is, this is something that we need to take seriously? This is something that we need to address. And Mimi, we were talking this morning, and you say you don't think we 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 we, we address this enough. So how would you how do you think our conversation for the next two weeks? How do you think it should go like? What do you think we should have in place in order to have this conversation? Do you think we should bring in um, people who have been, uh, we, uh, people who've been uh, how do I put it, sexually harassed? <laughs> or do you think we should just have the basic conversation for now and carry on with our plans as we've, as we've discussed on the phone? So, so um, um, let me speak as an HR person, right? Yeah. So, harassment. So harassment is a topic, a topic that, that it's, it's very, very delicate, delicate. right right yes. sexual, sexual harassment, harassment is even more delicate, more delicate. So, so it's usually, it's usually very, very difficult, difficult for, victims for victims to talk, to talk about, about, it. about it however, however if you want to get a get background a information and know and how there is there nothing, is nothing as, good as good as hearing it from the hospice mouth Okay. So, so if we, if find, we find people, people that, are that are willing to talk, to talk about, about their experience, their experience that, might that might not only empower, empower them, them because, because now, now they're taking the power from their victim, from their perpetrator, from their perpetrator and, they're becoming, and they're becoming they're becoming strong, strong victims and speaking up speaking about, their, about experience. their experience. But, but it's also it's going also to help, help others, others that, that are maybe thinking: Is this sexual harassment? Is it not? Um, um, am I comfortable? Uh, am I comfortable? Might not, because, because then might they can ask questions, questions, to questions to a person who has lived the bad experience, the bad experience of harassment. Of harassment. But, I but I think, for the most part, our, most conversation, part, this our morning, conversation this morning, which I talked about, I talked about our, community, our community, our society, our society and how we and deal, how we with, deal harassment, with harassment, and how, and and how forever. forever um, um, women have women taught, have taught that, that the best way to climb a ladder, ladder is by, is using, by using the sexuality. We have I have a problem with that because we have a very, very intelligent women, intelligent young ladies in our community and in our society. And instead of us taking advantage of the brains that we have, um, we have just decided that we're just going to live in this um, society and in this norm that makes us think, okay, because I'm a woman, um, all I have to do is be beautiful, right? I've had people say to me, oh, you're doing a doctorate? I'm surprised. I say, why, right? Okay, just because I am beautiful, just because I love having fun, that doesn't mean I'm not smart. That doesn't mean I cannot be a very, very productive person. As a matter of fact, probably more productive than most men right? But because we are growing up or we grew up or we live in a world where we are expected not to be anything more than a beautiful face, um, it affects the way we behave. It affects the way we reason. It affects the way we, we interact in our community. And I'm saying in our community because I had told myself that once I'm done with my doctorate and I told her this morning, even if it's for free, I would talk about women empowerment. I would talk about sexual harassment and not putting up with it. I would talk about using your brain and not your body. I would talk about excel as a woman because you were smart, not because you lay on your back. There's so many things that I think when I'm done with this stuff, I want to do. And I want to do that because I have looked um, back and why I personally haven't been a victim but I know of so many victims. I know of so many women that are so smart, yet they sold themselves short because they grew up in a culture where their brains really didn't matter, right? So instead of using the brains and making a difference, they just decide to say, okay, this is a society norm. I'm just going to be a part of the norm. So that's something that we need to walk away from. That's something that we need to step away from as women, as people. And I think it starts with the women knowing their worth. It starts with the women knowing 
they're, they're, they're beautiful without somebody else telling you you're beautiful. And I joke at times, people say you're beautiful. I say, I know, right? <laughs> and it might come across wrong, but there's nothing as good as looking, looking in the mirror, in the mirror and, liking and liking what, what you, you see. see. There's nothing, nothing as beautiful, beautiful as, looking as looking in the mirror, in the mirror and saying, you know, saying what? you know what? I know I, know I, deserve, I deserve better. better. I know, I know I'm, I'm wrong. wrong. There's, There's nothing, nothing as great as looking in the mirror, the mirror and saying, you know what? I am in control of my body and I'm in control of my head. So, so I think I think it's amazing. amazing. I think those two if points. If we can get people that have been to talk, talk about this, this it will be, be priceless. But I but believe, I believe that, that as a community, we, we need, need to talk about this thing. thing. We need we to need drive it in. We need to drill it in so that the girls that are coming up, the young girls that are growing, they know that hey, I could be the owner of Pop Magazine because I got what it takes. You know, you know, I could I run could a run company, company like Rosling because, because I got, I what, got it what, it what it takes. I could be I could a be doctor a if I want because, because I have, I have the, brain. the brain. We, we, we shouldn't, shouldn't be about, be about oh, oh, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. So, that's so that's why you made it, you made it here. here. You know, you know let's, let's, let's start, start working, working on stepping, stepping away, away from, from that, that society norm that is not so normal. not so normal. So um, thank you very much, Mimi, from, 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 from your, you know, your presentation, what I've gathered should be an absolute, you know, should be an absolute point of our conversation should be how we can be who we want to be. So mm -hmm. sometimes we spend our entire time saying we should be this, we should be that, we should be this. And we don't really hammer on the how. So if you're joining us or if you're going to be with us, you know, in two weeks time, Please do bear in mind that we're going to be talking about how you can actually look at yourself in the mirror and say you're worth it. We're going that's to be giving you true. some of the key things, some of the characteristics that you need to develop to help you look at yourself and being great and feeling great and being happy. We are also going to be talking about the psychological damage of not being confident. Peace and security at work, we will talk about that as well. Psychological, we, we're going to talk about that. So in two weeks' time, we've, we've said the date already. In two weeks' time, we're going to be talking about sexual harassment especially. So we'll take it from the mental, the psychological, the physical, and the how you can really overcome that. And we'll also be hammering on the effect. So, Rosalind, if you have a word to say, we would like to wrap up with you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I think I've got your mic muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I back on? Yeah, I think um, Mimi's message was very strong. Girls and women need to know that they need to value themselves more. They need to really, really preserve themselves and be able to say no to all this. So I think there's nothing much more for me to say because Mimi has basically said it all. So I, I'm very excited to be part of this discussion. And obviously, I'm hoping that um, everyone's going to join us in two weeks' time so we can just carry on with it. You're on mute. <laughs> so actually, this conversation... <laughs> <laughs> this conversation happened because <laughs> this conversation happened because the team at Faber Freak thought, Madam, you know, you're always talking about bullying and harassment. You're always talking about peace and security at work, psychological effects, psychological damage. I think most people out there, women out there, really would like to find out more about this. Why don't you talk about this? So I said, okay, this week I was going to go on a one-man show. It was going to be a solo show about me just talking about my experience back in HR, my experience as a company director, my experience as a business woman and the kind of sexual harassment that I've received in the last 10 years since starting my, my business. So thinking about the topic, I thought, no, this is a huge topic. I can't, I can't really come out here and talk about this on my own because I can only refer to me and my experience. So I decided to hook up with Mimi yesterday, really. And I told her, Mimi, I know you, you're, you're HR, you have, you, your background is HR, and we've always talked about policies and procedures, and we've always been talking about these HR things. There is this issue of bullying and harassment that I really want you to come and spend 15 minutes of your time to talk about how you do it, the policies. And she was like, oh, Adeline, I think I'm passionate about this because this is my plan. I'm looking at starting, you know, a free 
service whereby I'll be advising women how to identify and taking care of, you know, not being bullied, not being harassed, especially the sexual harassment. And then I also spoke with Rosalind just today and I told her, Rosalind, I, I know you have a company in, in England and it will be good for uh, somebody who owns their own company to, to give an example and she accepted to come on. So this was really a sh kind of short notice um, live that we did, but I'm sure those who are going to watch after this will, will gain a lot from what we've just said. Please do make sure you share the links and together we're gonna come back in, in two weeks time. Uh, Rosalind and, and, and Mimi are going to be here with me and we're going to exhaust sexual harassment on its own because we couldn't really talk a lot about it today because it's a very big topic and it's a topic that you know that involves a lot of people the kind of people we're looking at we look at young graduates we're looking at um young um workers we are looking at people who um oh we're looking at people who have been bullied who would like to share their experience and i think someone just said i was bullied months ago and although i enjoy my current job and my boss is supporting i still have the nagging feelings that i'm not good enough and that people think i'm a failure why is this and what can i do about it wow rap says that's a very that's a very um that's a very <laughs> i don't know if someone one of you girls want, want to want to want to reply to him you know that's deep. that's deep that's deep yeah 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 i think this I is, think this is the point. Point. Yeah. Yeah. oh sorry, oh, sorry. Mimi, you want to go. no go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah yeah i was yeah, just, yeah. Saying, just saying these are the these consequences, consequences of um of bullying, of bullying because, because it follows, it follows you everywhere because it gives you the feeling of not being adequate it gives you the feeling of constant fear and you just lose your confidence so these are really the problems. Really problem. so, so it's important, it's important that, that um, this person, person gets, gets to speak to, to if there's an HR department in their organization, organization, they can speak to them. to them. They can also they can go also to other organizations, organizations independent organizations, organizations who, who can, can provide support, support in their community. community. I'm, not I'm not sure where they are. They are. Yeah, so, yeah, so if you can just source independent organizations as well if you don't want to go through your company to, to discuss, discuss this, this then you can get a bit of counseling, counseling because you definitely need, need to build, build your, confidence your confidence and, and find a way to move on. on. Yeah. 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 All right. So, All right. I'm, just so gonna I'm just going to add a little bit of the word, word um, um, Rosie, Rosie just said. Um, um, it's Ramses, right? right? Yeah, it's Ramses. So, so first, first thing, thing, it's not it's you. The problem is not you. So, you, you shouldn't, shouldn't say, say you are a failure, failure. Or, you or you shouldn't, shouldn't think, think you are a failure. Are a failure. I, I find that, that as a HR person, person when, when somebody, somebody is bullying, bullying or harassing another, another one, one, they have, they their, have personal their personal self esteem. Self -esteem. Definitely they not really you. Not. So if you love and enjoy what you're doing, my advice will be speak to your HR business partner. And if you say your manager is supportive, start by having a conversation with your manager. Let your manager know this is how you feel. You let your manager know, I love working here. I love reporting to you. However, I have this experience that I would like to share with you. At that point, your manager, um, knowing your productivity and know your knowing your dedication will probably know the next step to take. Probably they will escalate to HR. And what that would do is HR is going to look into the situation. They're probably going to do a little bit of investigation. And um, the bottom line is that even though you like this job and your, your, your manager is great and supportive, if you keep this bullying to yourself, it's not going to change. You're going to find that this place that you enjoy working at, this job that you really love doing, some days you're not going to want to come to work. And that's not good for you. So, and if this person is bullying you, think about others that he might be bullying or she might be bullying as well. Now, if it's not addressed, then it will affect you in the long run and it's probably going to affect your team at large. So my advice will be, Speak to your manager. If if your manager chooses to escalate it, which is what she should he or she should do, they go that route. But do me a favor, you are not the problem. Okay, you are the victim. Whoever feels the need to bully you is the person who has a problem, not you. Wow, 
Wow, thank you so much, Mimi. Ram says, I hope your 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 question was answered. Speak to your manager and also look at your I think sometimes, Mimi, it's it's always important for you to, you know, if I feel I'm being bullied and I'm being considered a failure, if I write it down, you know, I write the things that make me feel because sometimes as I as we've all we've all agreed that we might not really um people might not know that they make us feel uncomfortable. Have you approached them? Have you told them? Do they know that they make you feel uncomfortable? If you're assuming, then it's good for you to reach out and talk to them and tell them specific scenarios where they've made you feel the way you're feeling. Tell them that on this day, that day, this is what you said, I didn't like it. You know, and if they keep doing the same thing, then that is when you should escalate. But if not, if you've not done the, the, the preliminary and you escalate, then I think to what your manager is going to ask you is, so... Have you spoken to the person? Have you written a letter? Can I see a scenario? As, as Mimi said, proof. So you need all this proof so that when you're speaking, you know, you will be you'll be taken seriously and, you know, they can look at the examples and actually address it. So Adeline, uh, yeah. one thing you have to also be mindful about is when, you know, based on what Ramses said, he's already feeling like a failure. What does that mean? That means the conversation with the with the person might not go as well if he decides to go talk to this person. It might actually lead to further intimidation. Okay, so with with bullying at work, we have to be very very careful because there are people that you know basically drive themselves nuts and go into depression just because they cannot handle um, a work environment where they're not comfortable because people need to work so they can maintain their lifestyle. And then if you have to go to work and have to deal with, um, a bully, it makes it even more frustrating and more difficult. So if he's already saying, I feel like a failure and I love my boss because my boss is very supportive. My advice as an HR person will be pull your boss in Maybe your boss can be the mediator. Maybe this person doesn't know they're bullying you. Maybe the, this person doesn't even know how you feel. But maybe your, bo your boss might be a voice of reasoning. But you're going to speak to this person um, at the point where you're already feeling like a failure might actually make matters eh, not too good. I would say get, uh, get a mediator, which in this case, I want to say your manager because you guys have a great relationship. That should be an easy fix. But for me, um, I keep trying to tell the victim, you are not the problem. You are not the problem. That's what I want you to remember. So that's that's a big one. That's a great one. So you're not the problem. Speak to your, speak with your manager. If you feel you're being intimidated by one particular person, speak to your manager. Give your manager proof. Give the manager examples. And get your manager to be the voice of reasoning. So I think that is that is amazing. Thank you so much, ladies. And this 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 has been better than I ever thought. You know, talking about bullying <laughs> and harassment, yeah. But talking about bullying and harassment, people who actually have the the you know the expertise to who actually work in an environment where they can give practical advice, practical solution, that is even better. And that is why in two weeks' time, Thursday, two weeks time, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about sexual harassment and we're going to talk about what we can do as leaders to really, really eliminate or play our parts, you know. And ladies, remember the power of positive thinking. You're in control of your headspace. Definitely. You're in control of your you body. You are in control. So we are going body. to end our live. I mean, we, I think we still have one minute, but, you know, but that if we have one minute. So if we have to say something in one minute, we'll just say, make it a date <laughs> in two weeks' time. Come and listen, sexual harassment. Come and see if you, I mean, if you've been a victim, please do reach out. And even if you don't want us to, to, to bring you on screen, we can share your scenarios. I mean, we'll be reading lots of scenarios. So yeah, we're looking forward. So thank you again, Mimi and Rosalind. I'm going to pop you girls. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you for having us. Seconds. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, guys. It has been, again, a pleasure to host another session, this time around bullying and harassment at work. Next two weeks, we're going to be talking about sexual harassment. But next week, we have our regular Corporate Women in Leadership Summit, which we're going to be talking about um, 
I mean, we're going to pop the topic on the page. I've got lots of topics coming up, but we're going to be popping this, the topic on the page. But yeah, next week, we'll see you next week, Thursday. In the meantime, I'm Adeline Sedekamga, founder, CEO, Faber Free Media Group, Corporate Women in Leadership. Bye.